Drainage. T. He term drainage describes the river system of an area. Look at the physical map. You will notice that small streams flowing from different directions come together to form the main river, which ultimately drains into a large water body such as a lake or a sea or an ocean. The area drained by a single river system is called a drainage basin. A closer observation on a map will indicate that any elevated area, such as a mountain or an upland, separates two drainage basins. Such an upland is known as a water divide. Drainage Systems in India The drainage systems of India are mainly controlled by the broad relief features of the subcontinent. Accordingly, the Indian rivers are divided into two major groups. The Himalayan rivers and the Peninsular rivers. Apart from originating from the two major physiographic regions of India, the Himalayan and the Peninsular rivers are different from each other in many ways. Most of the Himalayan rivers are perennial. It means that they have water throughout the year. These rivers receive water from rain as well as from melted snow from the lofty mountains. The two major Himalayan rivers, the Indus and the Brahmaputra originate from the north of the mountain ranges. They have cut through the mountains making gorges. The Himalayan rivers have long courses from their source to the sea. They perform intensive erosional activity in their upper courses and carry huge loads of silt and sand. In the middle and the lower courses, these rivers form meanders, oxbow lakes, and many other depositional features in their floodplains. They also have well-developed deltas. A large number of the peninsular rivers are seasonal, as their flow is dependent on rainfall. During the dry season, even the large rivers have reduced flow of water in their channels. The peninsular rivers have shorter and shallower courses as compared to their Himalayan counterparts. However, some of them originate in the central highlands and flow towards the west. Most of the rivers of peninsular India originate in the western ghats and flow towards the Bay of Bengal. The Himalayan Rivers The major Himalayan rivers are the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra. These rivers are long, and are joined by many large and important tributaries. A river along with its tributaries may be called a river system. The Indus River System the river Indus rises in Tibet, near Lake Mansarovar. Flowing west, it enters India in the Ladakh. It forms a picturesque gorge in this part. Several tributaries, the Zaskar, the Nubra, the Shiok and the Hansa, join it in the Kashmir region. The Indus flows through Baltistan and Gilgit and emerges from the mountains at Attic. The Satluj, the Bees, the Ravi, the Chenab and the Jhelum join together to enter the Indus near Mithan Kot in Pakistan. Beyond this, the Indus flows southwards eventually reaching the Arabian Sea, east of Karachi. The Indus plain has a very gentle slope. With a total length of 2,900 km, the Indus is one of the longest rivers of the world. A little over a third of the Indus basin is located in India Ladakh, Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Punjab and the rest is in Pakistan. The Ganga River System the headwaters of the Ganga, called the Bhagirathi, is fed by the Gangotri Glacier and joined by the Alaknanda at Devaprayag in Uttarakhand. At Haridwar, the Ganga emerges from the mountains onto the plains. The Ganga is joined by many tributaries from the Himalayas, a few of them being major rivers, such as the Yamuna, the Ghagra, the Gandak and the Kosi. The river Yamuna rises from the Yamunotri Glacier in the Himalayas. It flows parallel to the Ganga and as a right bank tributary meets the Ganga at Allahabad. The Ghagra, the Gandik and the Kosi rise in the Nepal Himalaya. They are the rivers, which flood parts of the northern plains every year, causing widespread damage to life and property, whereas, they enrich the soil for agricultural use. The main tributaries, which come from the peninsular uplands, are the Chambal, the Betwa and the Sun. These rise from semi-arid areas, have shorter courses and do not carry much water in them. Enlarged with the waters from its right and left bank tributaries, the Ganga flows eastwards till Farakkar in West Bengal. This is the northernmost point of the Ganga Delta. The river bifurcates here. The Bhagirathi Hooghly, a distributary, flows southwards through the Deltaic Plains to the Bay of Bengal. The main stream flows southwards into Bangladesh and is joined by the Brahmaputra. Further downstream, it is known as the Meghna. This mighty river, with waters from the Ganga and the Brahmaputra, flows into the Bay of Bengal. The delta formed by these rivers is known as the Sundarban Delta. The length of the Ganga is over 2,500 km. Ambala is located on the water divide between the Indus and the Ganga river systems. 
the plains from Ambala to the Sundarban stretch over nearly 1,800 kilometers, but the fall in its slope is hardly 300 meters. In other words, there is a fall of just 1 meter for every 6 kilometers. Therefore, the river develops large meanders. The Brahmaputra River system The Brahmaputra rises in Tibet east of Mansarovar Lake very close to the sources of the Indus and the Satluj. It is slightly longer than the Indus, and most of its course lies outside India. It flows eastwards parallel to the Himalayas. On reaching the Namcha Barwa, 7,757 meters, it takes a U turn and enters India in Arunachal Pradesh through a gorge. Here, it is called the Dihang and it is joined by the Dibang, the Lohit, and many other tributaries to form the Brahmaputra in Assam. Brahmaputra is known as the Sangpo in Tibet and Jamuna in Bangladesh. In Tibet, the river carries a smaller volume of water and less silt as it is a cold and a dry area. In India, it passes through a region of high rainfall. Here the river carries a large volume of water and considerable amount of silt. The Brahmaputra has a braided channel in its entire length in Assam and forms many riverine islands. Do you remember the name of the world's largest riverine island formed by the Brahmaputra? If yes do comment on the comment box. Every year during the rainy season, the river overflows its banks, causing widespread devastation due to floods in Assam and Bangladesh. Unlike other North Indian rivers, the Brahmaputra is marked by huge deposits of silt on its bed causing the riverbed to rise. The river also shifts its channel frequently. Thanks for watching do like share and subscribe the video.